summer drawing to a close here in the southeast. The roof is closed at the wondrous Mercedes-Benz Stadium due to the hot temp still outside here in downtown Atlanta. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Detroit's offense ready to take over. down at Stafford and his first look is incomplete yes sir how about an out of boy there on first down got his hand in and knocked it away incomplete it's second down and ten second and ten now from the 27 <laughs> to throw again Stafford and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, here's Stafford. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure they didn't give up much run after catch. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Gurley, the ball carrier. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 41, Ryan. And he will find his man on the outside. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It's not quibble cool about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. And there's a run there by Todd Gurley, and we all know he's looking to rebound from the least productive season of his career. And I think Atlanta presents him a great opportunity to do just that. They'll use him really well running it as well as catching it out of the backfield. Ryan able to get this to Gurley. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. On first down, it's Gurley. And Gurley. This is DeAndre Swift, who, of course, played just up the road in Athens. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. 
Foyasade Aluakon made the tackle there from his safety position. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Out of the gun, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Stafford's pass thrown to the sideline and incomplete. It's third down and five yards to go. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. A shotgun snap for Stanford. Amendola catching it left side. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Taken right around the 44. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over. So they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points they got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense, they affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the shotgun, Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Brings up third down. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not. And they'll try to convert on third and inches. Now it's Gurley, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll give him a fresh set of downs. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From the 38, Ryan. A very quick pass to Ridley. And some run to Times now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's in the cornerback position. From the two now, second and goal. From the gun, it's Ryan. Falcons have taken the early lead. They went empty backfield. All their weapons.
weapons out wide, so there, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball, because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Touchdown, off Richter to kick off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Stafford with a play fake to Swift, and he'll set to throw. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On first and ten, it's Swift. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. And his throw here is incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. It is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Throwing on third down. Stafford. It's caught. Jones. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Complete. That gain on third down, good for 28. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Operating from the gun, Stafford. And that'll be incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Stafford going to lead with Swift on the draw. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. To throw on third down. Stafford, the third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. They went with the dive look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. So on fourth down, the Lions turn it over to Matt Prater for the field goal try. This one from 35 yards away. And the 13-year man puts it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. 
So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley, and he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. He's already put it on the ground once in this first half. There are no gain, just struggling to get going. Yeah, and what he needs right now, a dose of confidence, which means his guys have to chop a hole, a big one for him, give him a chance to run a little bit and gain some of that confidence back. He didn't get it on that carry. This pass into the hands of the running back, Tom Gurley. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Good route. Good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first. And that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up. Julio Jones all alone. Touchdown, Falcons. Matt Ryan, his second touchdown pass of this opening quarter. And the Falcons push further out in front. Well, we've seen these two, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, connect quite a few times over the years. It never gets old. It never gets old. Well, maybe for the defense it does, yeah. but not for us who are watching it. And Julio, every time he steps on the field, you can just about mark him down for 100 yards. That's about his career average per game. But think about this. Getting in the end zone has always been a struggle for him. He gets the big yardage, but he doesn't get the touchdowns. Not this time. No matter how many people were kicked in coverage, he found a way to beat it. this near the 25 just a little pass there call it the 26 the Lions offense they get ready to head back onto the field and tough to win games if you're going field goal field goal field goal here they got field goal last time now they'll be looking for a touchdown They're looking for the big chunk now because as you noted the field goal field goal field goal the way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second and nine. Stafford, and this one incomplete. Stafford. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. 
When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. A 45-yard punt for there on the return. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Now this one into the hands of the tight end, Hayden Hurst. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Now Ryan on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. Three yards the gain there, second down. So they still get the completion even though the blitz was on. But the blitz got there. Does that stay in the mind of the quarterback the next couple plays? That's what you're hoping for. That's what you're planning for. It's a little risk-reward, right? You're leaving your guys on an island back there in man coverage. But you take the chance that you get to the quarterback. And so he gets completion here. Congratulations. Keep coming at it. Still able to cover on the back end. Intended target on that one, Russell Gage. And that'll make it third down. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the tab. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. On first and 10, it's Ryan. He was looking for Julio Jones, his Pro Bowl receiver. That'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Throwing again. Ryan, short throw underneath to Hurst. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? To throw again is Ryan. This will be caught inside the 10. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. While sometimes it doesn't appear like much, the out route can be very dangerous when you throw it to a guy like Julio Jones. If you try and undercut it, he can turn into a big play. But the reason he's able to get it so often is because of his ability to push people deep, and they have to respect that. On first and goal, Gurley. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Out of the gun, it's Ryan.
defense ready to kick off their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a first down throw, Stafford out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven, Stafford going to give it to Swift. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stops at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. No gain on the play. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. From the gun, Stafford. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he is going to have the Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Stafford to Jones, enough for a Lion first down. Detroit. Operating from the gun, Stafford. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Back to the running game with Swift. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Stafford. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down in bounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. The head coach relied on his eagle eye in the sky to make the right call and was told to challenge it. And it looks like it's paid off. And from a coach's standpoint, when you throw that flag, it's probably a pretty tense moment here at Paysall. Yeah, you have that little bit of indecision. You throw it where you feel like you're right, and then you think, uh-oh, did I get it right? In this case, they can celebrate. Crater for the extra point, and that makes it a 14-10 ball game. Cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Here's Powell on the return. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? And a 
throw right side, taken in here to start this drive. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And when these two are clicking, Ryan and Jones, and we've seen multiple hookups here in this one, usually their offense is clicking, and that's why they're winning. Yeah, they tend to follow what those two do. They set the tone for either a good day or maybe a tougher day. And right now, we're seeing an excellent game because those two are finding each other. Doesn't matter where on the field, they're making plays. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? From just shy of midfield, Ryan, the Pro Bowl wideout, Julio Jones, his intended receiver. Third down here. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Falcons on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, Ryan. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Jones. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And the running lanes non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now it's Stanford. Incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. On third down, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on to kick it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. It'll be a net of 39. 41-yard punt, two on the return. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A gain of a yard. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Ryan. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. 
And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. At the Lions' 35-yard line. On second and 12, Ryan. To the right side and complete to Hurst. And down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Four. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. from the gun, Ryan. And he will find Ridley, that's complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Falcon passing game looking good on this drive as they get the first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. He'll drop this underneath to Gurley. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Three yards the gain there, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. On third down, Ryan. His pass caught at the four. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Here we go. It's Gurley. Oh, look at the juke. And now running right through him. And not only did he not get in the end zone, he didn't get the first down either. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. the ground it's swift to start the drive and he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. the lions now are going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half and detroit getting set to go now and what do you think goes on here in this situation if you got the football you're trailing you're back in your own territory with just a little time do you try something you're thinking about jump starting your team Right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. First down now, but the clock continues to move. A 
The final shot before the break. Stafford. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off for the pressure. Maybe that was for the best as that brings us to the end of his first half of play. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. To throw is Ryan. He's going to sling this deep down. And got his man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half. And that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Second and four at the 35-yard line. From the 35, back to work on second and four. From the gun, it's Ryan. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. Ryan will throw again. Dumps it off to Gurley. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he is into the end zone for the Falcon touchdown. Matt Ryan able to connect with his top man, Julio Jones. And the Falcons will extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you've taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Touchdown, Hoff Richter to kick off. 
To return, here's Agnew. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So we get a look at the Lions' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their laps. A 40-yard punt, no return. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. The veteran Jamie Collins there on the tackle. Really they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it just as they did on that last play. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. From the gun, Ryan. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 17 yards and a first down for Atlanta. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he'll go down at the 28. Two yards, good enough for a first. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Wait, wait, wait. 
Gurley. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A lot of praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. That was a first down pickup of eight. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Brings up second and nine at the 10-yard line. Now second and nine from the 10. Here's Ryan. And it's caught. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Well, we know he has pretty good hands on display there. In fact, he only needed one of them. Yeah, nowadays, all these receivers work on this, right? They do the one-handed catches off the machine in practice. They do it with their quarterbacks. They do it contested, uncontested. They make it part of their repertoire. On third and one, Ryan. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Line of scrimmage, the two. They can still get a first down if they just get a yard out of this on fourth and very short. Now it's Smith. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out. Nah, nah, nah. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. Ku able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Lions 10. Touchdown, Hoff Richter to kick off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here, so get this up to the 29. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Three yards the game there, second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, Swift. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Here comes the Lions punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. take over here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here and now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter your three scores to the good what's your approach on this drive too early to fully commit to playing the clock game yet at the same time you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense this is what NFL offenses call four-minute football take the clock out of the game a little bit wind it down but at the same time keep advancing the ball down the field and he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down yeah another good run there he's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon and that last carry it puts him over 100 yards now for the day so they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33 <laughs> operating from the gun Ryan over the middle that's caught by Ridley and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. At the 44-yard line. going to get to the line to run another play so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close we'll return with more after this you're watching the nfl on ea sports back to back good plays have them on the move on first down now Gurley, and just no chance of turning the corner he can only get back to the line of scrimmage jared second and ten coming up no Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Christian Jones. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Well, there's that man again. It's complete. And to the 49-yard line, but no further. And obviously, he is well short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Lions are going to take over with a long field ahead and a first and 10. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Amendola catching it left side. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. 
Stafford looking to throw on third and one. That's complete to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. from Stafford caught by Amendola. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. On first down, Stafford here. That'll be taken in there by Kenny Galladay. Stafford's pass. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game, and they've done a great job of doing that. Throwing again on second down. Stafford. He'll find Swift out of the backfield. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Stafford on first down. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And the stiff arm proved fruitful for a second, but the daylight quickly snuffed out. Three yards the game there, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Stafford throwing complete there to Amendola. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. Three yard attempt. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And that'll get the deficit down to 15. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores. And they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. its next possession. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. Seven yards to pick up there. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. 
at the 31 yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And they'll drop this underneath to Gurley. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. They run, it's Gurley. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. The ball carrier. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Two. Brings up second and eight. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, Ryan. Left side completion to Jones. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 11 yards there, first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Early with a carry on first down. He'll only get a couple. Second and eight, fourth coming. Not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Another carry now for Gurley. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing, and I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On third down, Ryan. He completes this to Russell Gage. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. On first down, it's Gurley. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Again, they run with Gurley. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions 22. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Now it's Gurley. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Third down. Ryan. It's caught. Jones. The Lions 
quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. And we'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Here's Gurley. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan. Pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish. Just love the execution. Love the tenacity. Love the way they finished. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.